hard to store medieval gear. So in this video what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to build a medieval knight's chest. Hi guys, it's Ben from Medieval Mayhem. On this channel we do a lot of videos about DIY, medieval costuming, weapons, armour and equipment as well as reviews of other people's products. We also look at medieval culture and some of the key events of the medieval period. Alrighty, so in this video we're looking at how to build a knight's chest. So I, um, I found myself getting involved more with a local reenactment group with a lot of the historical European martial arts that they do on a weekly basis and I wanted to be able to store my gear effectively. I'm a single parent, I've got kids running around so I don't want them getting into too much of the stuff all of the time and I needed a way to be able to get everything nice and organised so I knew where it all was. Let's take a look. Symbology was really important to knights and warriors of the period and just as it is today with, with modern soldiers and, um, and people in the military and in law enforcement you just need to look at the shoulders of pretty much anyone and you'll see uh, nation, national flags on their patch, uh, shoulder patches and though you'll see uh, unit emblems and uh, indications of their position and so on so uh, very much as I think as it would have been in the medieval period uh, I think symbology would have been very important so I've decided to carve a bunch of different symbols that would have been relevant um, during the particular period for um, I guess my reenacting and because um, uh, I think that uh, people would have looked at these symbols and been reminded uh, just as, as, as I was when I was a soldier uh, I spent 14 years as a, as a soldier um, people would have been reminded of their purpose and their, their function um, and, and symbology is very important so, so there we go
Alrighty guys, now we're complete. Really happy with this. It's a, it's a really solid box. It's just the right size for what I need it to be to carry my armor and my gear for uh, historical European martial arts. It's, it's come out really well. Some of the carving has not come out quite as well as I really hoped, such as the front carving. I spent several days on this and I, I just couldn't quite get the depth that I was looking for and the painting hasn't come out quite as well as I hoped. I actually based this off a Saxon cross, a, a late Saxon cross, something in the region of mid 10th century from, uh, I believe it's somewhere north of York uh, that was featured in a documentary a couple of years ago. And uh, it, it, it had a lot of um, oranges and different blues and stuff on it. And I thought, wow, that's, that's quite amazing because we tend to look at crosses and we just see the stone, we don't see the, the painting that used to be there. However, the other um, carvings have come out really well. Let's take a quick look. Uh, alrighty, so we've got the fleur de lis on the top, which is um, pretty much the symbol that I use most of the time. And I guess it would be my, my uh, sort of character symbol. We have uh, the Order of Christ cross, not a Templar cross. Um, and this was carved on the side. So it's possible that my character may have been on crusade or something and would have carved and and sort of um, to remember and, and uh, To look at the significance of of their time in the Middle East and We also have the cross of um, Jerusalem and um, As I say, you know these sorts of things had had huge significant meaning to the people uh, Really just not quite as quite as happy as I could be with this cross. Uh, just a bit disappointed really, but uh, you know what, I'm, I'm quite new to carving. And um, and there we go. I did put quite a good stain on it, it's come out really well. Uh, and I've topped everything with an oil-based uh, clear varnish, which means it'll survive in, in weather pretty easily. Alrighty guys, thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share, and I'll catch you in my next video.